Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Welcome everybody, Kevin Jackson here. We are in the midst of a trade war. You're listening to the Kevin Jackson Show, KJRadio.com. And the left want you to believe that the man who just came off the best first year in the presidency in modern history is an idiot still. Donald Trump, he's engaging in a trade war. What's he going to do? Look, we've done so well with trade in the past, haven't we? Under Barack Obama, eight years, we lost five trillion dollars in trade. Five trillion. But Donald Trump, he's the idiot, right? He's the man who says, you know what? We're no longer going to lose in trade. And he's he's proven it. I look, I don't know how how much you're following trade. I don't know what, you know, if that's your bag. Is that your bag, baby? But let me say this to you. The first thing Donald Trump did was he got China to lift the beef embargo, the where they would not accept American beef. Very first thing he did in trade. Now, I don't know how much beef's being sold in China, but I know Chinese like there's a lot of them and they can't handle the production of beef all on their own. So they are importing American beef. That's the first thing that he did. Second thing that he did when he went to China, he got them to lift the trade to uh, lessen trade by 63 percent. The tariffs on 183 items. Now, I don't know what those items are. I haven't looked at them. I haven't gone into that deeper research. But 70 percent, 63 percent of the tariff is now gone from 17.3 down to 7.7 percent tax on those goods. And from what I hear, it's opening up the markets. I don't know by how much, but I know it's happening. Now, we currently have over a 350 billion, I think it's 387 billion, but it's a lot. China is our number one, you know, trade imbalance partner. And Donald Trump says, we're fixing this or else. So now he's going after steel and he's going after aluminum. And he's doing it for a reason. He's being very selective in what he's choosing to go after. Everybody wants to pretend that this is big trade war going on. Oh, it's going to crush our economy. Things are going to get so bad. Donald Trump says there are certain industries in a country that you must depend on. It isn't making widgets and little little gadgets and, and plastic toys for, you know, for Christmas. It's things that you depend on for infrastructure. This is where you need to have your technology. I was talking to somebody the other day. I said, have you looked at the technological advancement in steel over the past hundred years? Have you looked at the technical advancement in concrete over the past hundred years? Look at any of these ideas. Look at what we've done with metal, what we've done with aluminum, what we've done with titanium and so on and so forth. There is a reason why Donald Trump is protecting those items. Those technologies, those uh, manufacturing uh, areas is because he understands what comes from that. But these idiots, oh, it's going to be the war. Things are falling. You have to love listening to, to losers. People who've given away over half a trillion dollars annually to other countries. And now they're mad that somebody who actually knows what he's doing, who actually has the, the intellect more than a, the baboon Barack Obama, they has the intellect to look at a, at a problem and say, we're going to solve it. Here's a, the Secretary of Commerce, I believe, who, who was addressing this on Stephanopoulos. you got to hear this guy because he, Wilbur Ross is who he is. And he, he essentially schools Stephanopoulos on exactly what the impact is going to be with all the skies falling. Because remember, everything Trump does, the outcome is Armageddon. It sounds like a lot of the president's political allies believe this is going to hurt their voters in their states. you got the Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, warning against unintended consequences. You're already seeing Electrolux in Tennessee put on hold a $250 million investment. The Wall Street Journal says this is the biggest policy blunder of the Trump presidency, that it's going to cost jobs, cost American consumers. Yeah, that's really not true. Uh, let me give you some actual numbers. Those sloganeerings don't really mean much until you put them into numbers. On an average car, it's $175 worth of steel increase is the maximum that would come from a 25% tariff increase. That's not much. But that's it's assuming not. no more retaliation from the Europeans. No, let me continue. 
Similarly, all the other products, the total amount of tariffs we're putting on is about $9 billion in a year. That's a fraction of 1% of the economy. So the notion that it would destroy a lot of jobs, raise prices, disrupt things is wrong. As to the idea of retaliation, sure, there may well be some sort of retaliation, but the amounts that they're talking about are also pretty trivial. It's some three billion odd dollars of goods that the Europeans have threatened to put something on. Well, in our size economy, that's a tiny, tiny fraction of 1%. So while it might affect an individual producer for a little while, overall, it's not going to be much more than a rounding error. I love how Wilbur Ross says, hold on, you don't know what you're talking about. Let me go on and finish, little boy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson, who you're listening to. It's always the skies falling with Trump. And you know what? I say to you, enjoy this. Enjoy it, because let me explain how the tariffs work. It's it's so incrementally small, whatever is going to happen with this, it, it won't be felt for so long that even if it were bad, it's not going to impact. It, it's not going to have any impact on the population. Now, notice Stephanopoulos says, well, you know, people are scared. You know, Paul Ryan warned against unintended consequences. Well, let's let's look at unintended consequences. For example, the unintended consequences of, say, mm, I don't let me think. Let me think the tax break. The tax cut, the unintended consequences, which, by the way, happened to be intended, were that they put more money back into the hands of people. That was the unintended consequence. The unintended consequence was people got bonuses. People got more of their tax money back and it put a boom into the economy. That was the unintended consequences. And so we saw the Treasury actually put more money in from for I think they for the period ending in December, wait, September, October, uh, whatever. I think it was December for that quarter. We had more money coming to the Treasury than at any time in history. That was an un- unintended consequence. So if you think the unintended consequence of a trade war is going to be that the United States lowers its trade deficit to something much more reasonable and we start getting our partners to behave and we take in their products, but they're going to be taking a lot of ours, and therefore it means that manufacturing of products that go outside of the country is going to increase dramatically, then yes, there will be unintended consequences. Short break. We'll be back in a bit. Listen to Kevin Jackson. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177. Or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. Beth Cook Moranville author of Closer Than Your Breath, A Book of Hope. Hope, that wonderful, wonderful four-letter word that you may feel completely out of. I wrote this book to give you great hope. It's not too late. If fetal position is an all-too-familiar place for you, I understand. If the next 60 seconds are too long, this book is for you. Wherever you are right now, whether you're dealing with divorce or death or sickness, take hope. You are going to make it through this pain. Don't roll your eyes. I've walked this road and I know it. The best is yet to come. Closer Than Your Breath, a book of hope from author and speaker Beth Cook Moranville can be found on Amazon.com or Kindle.com. For more information, visit CloserThanYourBreath.com or on Facebook at Closer Than Your Breath. 